Hey everybody, how was your Halloween? What did you go as? Write it in the comments below. I went as the pile of poop emoji from the Emoji Movie and I'm still in costume! <laughs>so today I want to talk to you about um, scale rudiments, right? And uh, basically that is the idea uh, first outlined by Bob Culbertson in his video uh, Chapman Sick Lesson slash Learning Modes from the Universal Scale. Look it up. Um, it is a really great video. His whole series that, that happen to be on YouTube are an excellent resource. Learn them. Um, but anyway, it is the idea that uh, if you are approaching scales from a three note per string standpoint, there is a predictable pattern of, um, of you know, small three note note patterns uh, that will allow you to constantly know where you are in the scale um, and be able to construct your lines easily um, and, and keep track of where you are super easily and put your scales together, no problem, super easy, all right. So, what are the advantages of this? Well, three notes per scale means that you barely have to move your hand. Um, you know, you get to stay in one place, which means that you could probably do more complicated stuff in the left hand. And they sit really easily in your hands. So, you know, this is not hard for me to do. And uh, they follow really predictable patterns. So, let's get started. Um, there are three basic type of rudiments. Uh, rudiment A is you start with the root note. Uh, and we're gonna, so when I say root note, I mean the first note that you're playing on that string. It won't always be the root of the scale, um, but you know when we're talking about the, the root of the rudiment, it's that first note that you're gonna play on the string. So you got your root note of the rudiment, and then a whole step, and then another whole step. That's type A. Type B is uh, root of the, of the rudiment, first note, half step, one fret, then a whole step. And then finally, type C is your root note of the rudiment, whole step, and then half step. And uh, as Bob says, all of your uh, scales, your natural modes, and all that kind of stuff are going to come from these three types of rudiments. You know, if you take a look at uh, something like the three note per scale major scale shape, right? We've got type A, type A, type B, type B, and then type C. Now, Bob talks about uh, what he calls the universal scale, um, which is essentially what each rudiment is starting on every note in the major scale, right? Uh, and how that stacks up and what he realized is that the pattern is always type A, type A, type A, type B, type B, type C, type C, and then it resets, right? Uh, and so when you look at that, uh, things start to become a little bit more predictable. Again, looking at it through the lens of, you know, a five string, uh, three note per string major scale, we've got two type A's, um, and then two type B's, and then that's type C. If you go from Dorian mode, you wind up with one type C, and then three type A's, and then guess what comes after that? Type B. Phrygian mode is going to be um, one type B, two type C's, and then two type A's. Lydian is going to be one type A, two B's, and two C's. Type A, oop, type down here, and then B, B again, and then two C's. Mixolydian is going to be all three type A's and then two type B's. A, 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 B, B, like that. Um, Aeolian mode, the minor scale, is going to be two type C's into all three type A's. Like that, and then Locrian is going to be type B, uh, B B C C A, and it follows this predictable pattern every single time. Um, and you know, I've got more laying it out uh, in my exercises on my Patreon page, but that's really all there is to it. Um, is these little scale rudiments, 
um, and they become super helpful when you're taking a solo. <laughs> You know, even as you change your hand location from, you know, maybe like the 10th fret oops, You know, as you change it from the 10th fret to like up to the 12th fret or something Right? I immediately know that that's where I am And because I know that I'm in the major scale, I know that descending, um, if I'm playing the root here uh, that comes on the second type A in the three type A's. And then below that is two type C's. And then a type B. Down to Dorian, I'm now in type C. Three type A's, type B. Back down to, to the major scale, I'm in uh, type C. And then two type B's and two type A's. So, just a real quick... Um, you know, breakdown is you've got your universal scale, as Bob calls it, which is um, type A, type A, type A, type B, type B, type C, type C. And uh, you can then transpose that onto any one of the natural modes, uh, minor or major, and you will always wind up uh, with a very concise pattern and a roadmap from that pattern for exactly where you are in your scales at all times. Um, and another cool thing that you can do is actually take these and uh, then mix and match them for like some really cool outlines. You know, like if I want to do like type A, type B, type A, right? That would be something like... All I'm doing is just mixing and matching my scales and I can get like a really cool out there pattern. You know, or not my scales, rather my rudiments. Um, and I get these really cool out there lines that are super easy to grab. And as long as I know where, where the strong notes are, you know, my, uh, if I'm in A minor, you know, my A, C, or E, um, and I can land the phrase on those, um, then it's going to sound pretty cool, right? So forth. All I'm doing is just going, hey, I'm going to play a type A here. Oh, I'll play a, type, a rudiment B. Oh, I'll play a C on this line. It's, you know, not all that complicated. Um, and I find that this concept really helps me to organize my scales um, in, uh, you know, kind of like easy to digest bite sized ways. So take that, see how you can apply it to your own music. And uh, like I said, Check out the um, exercises on my Patreon page. Um, you know, it's got it a little bit more broken down. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Keep exploring.